and bounds. The land of the free and the home of the brave is becoming, uh, in many ways, an affront to that vision of what our country should be about. There are so many costs to society of not empowering men and women to succeed when they come out of prison. You see there are approximately 47,000 people in New Jersey prisons and jails. The rate of incarceration per 100,000 residents is 190 for whites, 630 for Hispanics, and 2,352 for African Americans. Approximately 14,000 people return home from prison each year because so many of the policies are short-sighted and don't take into consideration the impact on families and communities. Families become collateral damage of the same system theoretically designed to protect communities and rehabilitate those who are incarcerated. We spend $900 million at the Department of Corrections. When you're facing an $8 billion deficit in the state, all of a sudden, well, maybe you're not reforming it for the right reason. You might be reforming it for the wrong reason, but all of a sudden reforms become uh, something that I think may be embraced more easily. More people incarcerated in the United States than any other nation in terms of percentage of population on the entire globe. That is unacceptable. This is not the America of which we dream. We are costing lives. We're costing dollars. And all we have to do is not be tough on crime, but to be smart on crime. All right. We're not asking for anyone who has committed a crime to not pay their due and just responsibility. But if you live and you breathe, you have made mistakes. If you don't have a chance to overcome those mistakes, you will continue to make them. And when we continue to make them, we cost the state of New Jersey billions and billions of dollars. We rob families of mothers and fathers. We create second and third generation of children who go in and out of incarceration. We devastate communities. I'm an ex-offender, um, been out since 1998. Before individuals come back, you have to restructure them. Gotta build them up. If you say saying go out here and do something different, then they have to leave the institution with something different. And the biggest thing is the mindset. Jail is nothing, man. I'll tell, you, I'll, t I'll tell you lies if I tell you jail is all scary and all that. You're gonna adapt to your situation. But I wanna tell you the full story is, like you will lose your mind if you ain't cognitive. If you ain't strong spiritually or have some type of foundation, you will lose your mind and come out of there broken. broken because of what comes with it, mm -hmm. the stigma. Till you go to your grave, mm -hmm. they'll smile, but the minute you know, he's an ex-con. Mm -hmm. And on an application, if you put on that application, say, have you ever been convicted of a crime? If you say yes and tell the truth, mm -hmm. they don't even process it. When you leave, it leaves. They put it right in the garbage can. I had been off parole for 15 years almost and still went to apply for a job in Food Town and they told me no. I've got four children now, I'm a wife now. How long does society keep putting me down for what I did 15 years ago? That's the problem. Stop pointing your finger at what they did and help them get from where they are. In all spheres of administration and law enforcement and people who are supposed to be in a position to assist in helping um, ex-offenders get to where they need to, to be. There are some who brutalize people, but that breaks people's spirit and their motivation and their drive to move forward, and then we wonder why they re-offended. We have helped those um, inmates that couldn't read or write. We assisted them in reading and writing so that they would be able to take a GED while in prison. Mm -hmm. But society didn't like the idea that we was able to get an education, education free while in, in yeah. prison mm -hmm. and they yeah. had to pay mm -hmm. for it. So what it did was stop us once again mm -hmm. from coming out with the ability to compete in society. In addition, when people are released from prisons, there are a number of restrictions on housing. For far too many people, there aren't homes for them to transition to. The hourly wage needed to afford an apartment at the average fair market rent in the state was $16.31. An individual 
earning minimum wage would have to work 127 hours per week to afford a one-bedroom apartment makes transition to home very difficult. We're not trying to make it easy on crime. We're trying to make it better for the people of the state of New Jersey. Our statistics show that long incarcerations, and particularly incarcerations for nonviolent drug offenders, does not make us safer, does not make our communities healthier, and does not prepare a person to come and take his or her rightful That's place right. in society. That's, right. That's what this legislation right. does. These are evidence-based practices that we know when we put them into effect will save the state of New Jersey hundreds of millions of dollars. We can't afford not to do it. It's the right thing to do. It's the human thing to do. The state of New Jersey talking about cutting your budget and saving money. Here it is, folks. Just housing and incarcerating and releasing is not working because they come back to our communities and continue to commit crimes. So education, definitely. Housing, a must. Food, the basic needs definitely have to be in place, but also the mental and the spiritual basic needs have to accompany that. So it comes from here to the state, to the legislation, to the federal, yeah. you know, and, and that's the collective uh, partnership that needs to happen so that we can begin to look at a solidified solution.